Good morning, Moraibu Rabotai. We are continuing on Shukha Aruch Arachayim and Hilchot Tefillah, Siman Sadi Hei. And we are up to Seif Gimel. Dav Kuf Chav Chet, Amud Aleph of the regular Prince of Mishnah Bura. Maran writes, Sarich Shi Maniach Yadav Al Libo Kfufin Haimanit Al Asmanit Vomet Kebed Lifne Rabo. He, when he stand in Tefillah, the positioning of the hands is right hand over left hand. You stand like a servant stands um, in front of his master. With reverence and fear. Um, and this is, a, a, again, a, a proper sense of shame. It's not an immature sense of shame, but the, the realization of like the Mesla de Shalim writes, when a person contemplates that you come close, literally speaking to the creator of the universe, and he listens to you, and he answers, that feeling gives a certain humility and sense of reverence and positive shame to a person, which is very much needed for tefillah, and that is this Seif in Shukha Aruch. That you put your hands, you position them. Again, this is not even going according to Kabbalah necessarily yet, but just standing uh, with hands on the chest, like a servant that's ready to listen, ready to uh, connect and 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 um, serve his master. Omed keeved lifne rabo beema beirau pachat velo yaniach yadav al chalasav. A person shouldn't put his his hands on his hips. That is considered an arrogant um, way of standing. So it's not a positive way to stand. Some, you know, some people, um, it becomes sometimes challenging when you have, um, especially with, with um, those um, who, who do wear gartel for tefillah, which we discussed before. Sometimes the most convenient position is to put your thumb inside the, the gartel and to kind of like shackle side to side. And that is basically very much close to what the Shekharach is saying here, what you should not be doing. You don't put your hand on your hip. You don't stand with, with, a, with a way that sound, you know, looks like an arrogant position. That's not considered a positive way. Now, says the Mishnah Ram, you put your hands, positioning, positioning them on your heart, on your chest, in a place that the position that regular um, servant stands in front of a master is like this, that's when you do it, um, you know, hands on the chest. This is basically something that's subjective very much, and says the Chafetz Chaim, Everything is um, following the custom, the uh, prevalent custom of the, the country, the, the time and the place to define yourself in. They bring in the name of Ari Kadosh, that this is not just dependent on the Minhaga Makom, but actually there is what to be said. In Torah Tassod, in the deeper sources and, and deeper concepts of, of, of mysticism, that the right hand should be on the left. And in the name of Raboshe Cordovero, who was a leading Mekubal in Eris Israel, actually in the time of Ariya Kadosh, he was much older, uh, when Ariya Kadosh came back from Egypt. At the age 20, basically Ramak was towards the end of his life. Um, he is a prolific author, a tremendous mikubal, and, and so on. So Ramak writes that you should put the, the thumb inside the palm of the, the hand, which, um, again, Kabbalistically speaking, the Ben Ishchai, let's speak about a few details over here. The Ben Ishchai, for instance, writes that. Um, when you say the entire tefillah, until you say the Yihul Ratzon, um, which is considered halachically the end of a person's tefillah, a person should stand like this. The entire tefillah, you stand, um, you know, Yad Yamin, Yad Smol, the hands uh, positioned in that way on the chest, um, the entire mahalach of the tefillah. Now, the 
Kafachaim brings very similar to the Mishnah Burah that brought from from the Ari Kadosh, in, you know, from Sefer Asara Ma'amarot in the name of Ari. Kafachaim also brings the Ari Kadosh. The there is so there is secrets of of Tfilah and the way a person's body is. It represents the Olamot Elyonim, right? Uh, for those who know the komat ha'adam, the the way the, the the physical body of a person is structured, it represents much higher um, aspects and, and concepts in correspondence with the worlds of spiritual um, energy and so on. And therefore, um, everything that you have in the tefillah really is much more meaningful than it just. It would meet the eye in a, in, a, in a surface level. So here, in surface level, as the Chafetz Chaim said, it depends on. Uh, it's subjective. It depends on the minhaga makom. If the um, the master demands, if the minhag is that the servant in front of the master stands like this, then you stand like that. If it, if they stand like this, then you'll stand like that. That's a you know alpi pshat. But alpi the the Chaim in the name of Ariya Kadosh that you you put. Um, it doesn't make a difference. He writes in, in what place you live, or what time you live. This is um, concepts of deeper sources. And he writes basically that you put your um, right hand. He, he also goes with this with the remark that we mentioned that you put the um, the agudal inside the palm of the hand. So basically, you end up doing something of this nature: um, the right hand on the left hand, and each one of the agudals inside. So that becomes al pikafachaim, something that that the person will do, um, regardless of the time and place that you find yourself. Now, um, the reason for this is a remez, and this is the, the Ramak himself explains this in in um, more than one place, but the Kavachayim brings it from him as well, that the reason for putting um, the right hand on the left hand is because right hand um, represents basically the, the Koach of Kedusha and Yetzer Hatov. The left hand is uh, always representation of uh, Gevura and, and Midata Gevura, and we want the Chesed to overpower the Gevura. That's why you'll find that uh, David Amelech, well, when he clapped and danced in front of the Sefer Torah, and they bring this to Poskim for, for Simchat Torah, when you dance and you clap, you clap the right on the left, not the left on the right, that will be a little harder for the lefties, but, but uh, regardless of whether or not you're lefty or righty, um, the, the right always represents chasadim, and the left would represent the um, the yatsimol would represent the dinim and koach gevura. This actually has an afkamina for lefties a lot across the shulcharuch. For instance, um, when you hold a, a fruit or a food to to eat, and you want to say bracha, which hand do you hold it in? You hold it in the right hand. Why? Because al pi pshat. You want to hold it in the most comfortable hand, making sure you're not going to drop it, right? If you're lefty, al pi pure alacha, you should be holding it in your left hand when you say bracha. But al pi kubalim, you always hold it in the right hand. Same would be with with, with holding of lulav and etrog, right? When you hold lulav and etrog, which hand do you hold the lulav in? Hmm. In your right hand. Why do you hold it in your right hand? Do you hold it in your right hand? Or do you hold it in your left hand? Right? Glove and throw, Right. Huh? Right. Why do you hold it in your right hand? Because right hand is more important and you have more, most of the 75% of the mitzvot in your lulav tied together. There are four species. Three out of four are tied together. Lulav and Hadas and Aravod are tied together. So right is more important than you hold them in right. So it should come out that if you're lefty, then you should be holding it in your left hand, right? That's why it should come out, because your left hand is your right hand. It's more important. But again, according to the Mekubalim, that will make a difference. Because there is essentially something with the right versus the left. So here is one such um, association as well that you have right hand on the left hand 
right, uh, representing chasadim and the positive getzeratov, and uh, the left will be the opposite. So therefore, you put the right on the left to overpower the the koach of the dinim, and um, a person that's holding their sidur with their hand, um, and it's not possible for them to to hold the sidur. Um, the same way that they're, you know, holding their hands, positioning them like that. So then, um, you know, you could hold the sidur in, in your right hand and put your left hand on your chest, still with the thumb inside the palm. Um, that would be the psak of kafachaim in, in that scenario that you don't have a shtender and you need a sidur and you have to hold it in your hands. Um, you know, that would be that would be the the right way of doing it. So says the shcharuch. Uh, in the next saif, oh, one 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 element that we, we left over here, important mishnabura mishnabura in ot zayin here mentions what the Ashkenazim do. This is really a rema, but it says beema when you daven with mm-hmm. with uh, reverence veyesh lehit noea bishat fila you should shackle during the tefillah says the chafetz chaim mishum. Like David Abelach says in Tehillim, Lamed Hey, that all of my bones, Hashem, scream to you, Mika Mocha, who is like you, right? Now this is um, from the Pri Hadash, the the, the uh, Magin Giborim, many others, as well. By the same time, we spoke about this earlier on in Siman Mem Hey. Um, and Memchet, when, when, when generally speaking, we, we discussed this, and um, we mentioned then, if you remember, that Maran Chida, for instance, very much disagrees with this. Maran Chida holds in Morei Be'etzba, he writes this in, in other places as well. Um, he writes, that's not Omed Bifnei HaMelech. So you want to shackle in other parts of Tefillah, Kol HaKavod, do it. But you don't move your body in a strange manner in front of a king. When you're standing in front of the king, you don't move. They, they tell about the, the um, uh, uh, Chazon Ish that when, when he davened, and he davened the long Shemon Aisre, so if you will put a full cup of water, full to the brim, on his head, a drop of it would not fall. He stood like a stick the entire time. In like like standing in front of a king, you know, contemplating the greatness of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. So again, this becomes one of those areas of machloket that you have uh, the shacklers and you have the non shacklers And again, Maran Chida writes that the proper um, the, the the proper conduct would be at least for the Sfaradim. We don't have this this thing to, to the Rama, even though the Pri Chadash also was one of the the Gdolea scheme of the Sfaradim. But nevertheless, Maran Chida is not in favor of shackling during the tefillah, but certainly those who do have what to rely on, given that is um, a respectful shackle, right? See, if, if somebody looks from the outside, and Maran Chida again writes this in Moreb Etzba about run, the mitzvah of running to the shul, the Gemara in Masechet Brachot of Zayin says, the name of Rabbi Zerah, the whole story, everyone knows there, um, that even on Shabbat, a person should be running to the to the Bet Knesset. You want to run to the mitzvah, and and so on. Achare Hashem Yehuki Ariyish Ag. You go after Hashem like a roaring lion with excitement, with passion, with zeal. But at the same time, says Maran Chida, you should not like run like a crazy man. The people look and, and the, you're machshil. You you make you, know, you make them cause them to mock. The of the Hashem and Avodah Hashem, that's a, that's a very negative conduct. So the same thing is with this as well. You know, a, a person that has a gentle shackle, you know, without disturbing their tefillah or anyone else's tefillah, and when a person looks at them from the outside, say, this is an evid standing in front of their master. Fine, that's a, that's beautiful. You certainly have the prichadash, the Rama, many others to rely on. But at the same time, have a yodea that there are those who say that that's um, not a correct. Uh, way of, of, of davening necessarily, not, not the correct way of standing in front of the king. Now, um, when, when you contemplate this, when you discuss this, if you would want to present this as a 50-50, a, an equal machloket aposkim, it would probably be safer to not shackle, because shackling would be something proper to do, right? But you're not over on anything, 
עצם מידת חסידות, כל, כל הספורטאי, if you say, כל הספורטאי תאמרנה uh, מי כמוך השם, applies to shuckling the תפילה, so if you don't do it, you haven't done anything wrong, you just haven't done the מידת חסידות, so to speak, of it. but if it's considered the wrong conduct, because it's not respectful uh, to stand in front of השם and, and move around, you should be standing, plus so then you're doing actually ביעדיים something that's negative, so um, if a person would, would, does not have a minhag necessarily, a, a, clear, um, a, a clear custom in the family or in the community or a rabbi or what, um, and they could equally daven be kavana in both. Some people will tell you, I could only daven be kavana if I don't move. Or others will tell you that I only could daven properly be kavana if I shuckle. So all odds equal, if that's not the case, would be, would seem, um, that, that going with Maran Chida would be the say, um, to be on the safer side and Bezat Hashem will get to discuss uh, the next if we'll discuss, start and discuss Seif Dalit in the days to come. Chazaku Baruch.